Hi, Dr. Goel from PQ Human Labs, and today I want to bring a question that I hear a lot from my clients, and it's specifically about hormone replacement therapy in women. So I have some of my clients who've come to me and said, you know what, should I be taking hormone replacement therapy? I'm in my 50s. I'm concerned about breast cancer. Though I don't have anybody who's had breast cancer in my family, I'm wondering whether or not I should be starting on estrogen and progesterone. So that's a great question, and I think there's obviously a lot of women in this boat who are wondering about this question. So let me take you through that question. Let's break it down. Firstly, as women enter into menopause, which usually is about a four or five year process, starting around 45 years old, their hormones start to change. The estrogen changes, that decreases, progesterone decreases, and then eventually the cycle stops because a woman is not releasing eggs anymore. And when that happens, these basically these hormones don't get released and that has a lot of health implications. I think in a previous episode I've talked about the importance of these, of these hormones for heart health, brain health, and bone health. So all three are really important because of these hormones. So should you be taking these hormones? Well some of the concerns have been that some of the, uh, the estrogen, prolonged exposure to estrogen, can lead to increased breast cancer. Now that's true. In certain women who are predisposed, prolonged use, let's say over 10 years, has been shown to increase breast cancer risk a small amount. So the question is, are you that person? Because the benefits, if, if you are not that person, if you are somebody who can take estrogen safely, the benefits far outweigh any risks. So the question is, how do you find out whether or not you can take estrogen safely? So the normal metabolism of estrogen is that estrogen is broken down by various enzymes into three main pathways. That's 2-hydroxyestrone, that's E1. Number two is 4-hydroxyestrone. And number three would be 16-hydroxyestrone. And the number two pathways is very non-toxic and doesn't lead to any type of problems. It's the number four and 16 metabolites of estrogen which cause issues. And so each of these pathways is dependent on your own personal kind of genetic makeup and also how you live your lifestyle. So for example, if you're somebody who pushes a great deal because of your enzyme activity to the form hydroxyestrone, then you need to take steps to slow that pathway down and also remove those metabolites as quickly as possible. Same with the 16 pathway, you need to basically either slow down that pathway, okay, or you need to remove those metabolites as soon as they arrive. The second, like I said, the second hydroxy pathway is, is you know, quite a safe pathway. In general, flavonoids, which are these super strong, you know, antioxidants, which are found, let's say, you know, in, in green vegetables and orange vegetables and blueberries and things like that, those flavonoids generally slow down the conversion of these these estrogen into their estrogen metabolites. So that's one thing. Things like smoking, high sugar intake, alcohol intake, they all increase the metabolism increase the metabolism of the estrogen into these byproducts, which some of them can be harmful and some of them aren't. So that's, that's one thing to be aware of. And then once you have these metabolites, it's also important you need to, the next step is that the body can get rid of those through a different type of detoxification pathway. And that involves the use of glutathione and B vitamins, methylation pathway. So if you keep your body running well with a good supply of glutathione and B, B vitamins, then your body can remove those toxic metabolites to non-toxic versions that are, can just be peed out by your kidney. So I hope that helps. It's, again, a complex answer. Speak to your healthcare provider about whether or not you're somebody at risk for developing more toxic metabolites of your estrogen if so, you can take steps to reduce that. Obviously, if you have a strong genetic component of breast cancer, such as a BRCA gene, that's a totally different story. In those types of situations, you need to thread, thread much more lightly about taking hormone replacement therapy.
when the vast majority of people, if they take precautions and understand what their genetic makeup is and what supplements they should be doing and how they should be living their life, they can pretty much reduce that risk of toxic metabolites of estrogen and take hormone replacement therapy safely and they can reap all the rewards. So I hope that helps and we'll talk to you later. Please like and subscribe the video and please send me any questions that I can help you with. We'll talk to you later.